Okay, so since this is the last talk, I want to thank the organizers. It was a very nice conference. I will be talking about the Schmidt rank for the commuting operator framework. This is joint work with uh, René Schwanek and Alex Stottmeister and Reinhard Werner. Um, yes, so what's this, is a, what's this about? It's about entanglement theory. And um, we want to answer the, the basic question, when can we consider a bipartite system finite dimensional? So when can we use finite dimensional, like matrix quantum info, to describe the correlations in it? And to answer this question, we need to step outside of the, the usual framework. And I'll briefly show you the answer. It's if there's not enough, uh, sorry, <laughs> there's not too much entanglement. So that's, that's what we'll get to, but we'll make this more rigorous. And for that, we'll introduce the Schmidt rank. Before I come to like, the commuting operator framework, let's briefly look at the, at the normal tensor product framework at the finite dimensional systems. Uh, here, this is just the usual stuff. We have uh, two Hilbert spaces, long to Alice and Bob. We have our joint system Hilbert space, the tensor product, and bipartite pure states, well, they're just unit vectors, right? This is the normal stuff. And we have the Schmidt decomposition. So given my psi, my units, unit vector, I can have a unique Schmidt decomposition. And the Schmidt rank is this number k here, which is unique, uh, uniquely defined by all the lambda i being non-zero. But we should ask, is there, is there an operational interpretation to this, right? So let's see. Um, what we can do is we can restrict the observables of Alice and Bob, we can restrict them onto those uh, Hilbert space dimensions of the, of the local Hilbert spaces where the, um, where the Schmidt coefficients are non-zero. So we can actually restrict this, the systems. We can do local compressions of Alice and Bob's observables without losing the correlations. And that gives us the, the operational interpretation here. The Schmidt rank, or its square maybe, is the smallest dimension necessary to simulate in a pure state, in a bipartite pure state, all the correlations. So, well, the square is the minimal Hilbert dimension, the Schmidt rank itself is the smallest local dimension. Okay, so we now wanna step outside of this, this um, framework and we'll go to the commuting operator framework. Well, what is the commuting operator framework? There's two aspects to it that I wanna mention. The, one, the first one where it came up, where the term comes from, is uh, from Tsirison's work. Tsirison asked, how do I model a bipartite system? So it's a question about how to model mathematically some physical system. How do I model two parties who independently perform measurements, and then I get my, my, get my correlation functions out of that? What's the, what's the correct model? And he asked, either I have two commuting observables on a joint Hilbert space, or Alice and Bob both have their individual Hilbert spaces and we're in the tensor product framework. Is there, an, is there a difference? And well, famously the MIP star equal to RE theorem, um, I'll come to that, proved that yes, there is. There is a finite gap difference. And the other aspect that I wanna talk about briefly is that, well, correlation experiments just make sense for general commuting observables. I don't need tensor products to talk about correlation experiments. Actually, in the classical theory, I'm talking about correlations between two random variables. I don't usually have a tensor product for that. And maybe we'll have two examples for that. The first one is quantum. Let's go quantum field theory, maybe. I have two, two observers, and their world lines in space-time. And in the thick parts of the, the world line, they're allowed to measure something. They're allowed to, to do some measurements. Then we know that these two, like, I'm looking at a setup where the, these two regions are causally separated. So then their measurements will commute. But in general, they will not be split in a tensor product sense. But of course, we can talk about correlation experiments, right? So what we should really do is we should look, can we define all the notions of entanglement and even can we define entanglement monotones, such as the Schmidt rank, in this setting? Because we want to we wanna quantify entanglement, right? The second example is classical. Um, this is an energy-restricted harmonic oscillator. This is just a subset of phase space, two-dimensional. Having, I'm having my, my classical harmonic oscillator dynamics, so it's just rotations. And I have, I have this circle. 
and Alice has, has control over the position variable, Bob has control over the momentum variable. Of course, I can ask for correlations between these two, but what I cannot do is I cannot draw the, the square here because the square will not be invariant under the dynamics. I cannot define the dynamics on the full observable algebra then or on the full uh, region. So if I want to include this energy restriction, I cannot have the square, but the square is what's needed for the tensor product. And yeah, well, I'll not talk about classical theory so much. I just wanted to convince you that like correlation experiments make sense in this setting and we should try to quantify correlations. We should try to quantify entanglement in this setting. So what I will do is I'll do an axiomatic approach to how to do that. I'll assume that Alice and Bob's local observable, uh, local systems are described by their observable algebras, which are here modeled by unital C-star algebras. Let's ignore what that means, if, if you don't know already. It's, it's a collection of, of observables. It's a nice mathematical structure. And um, we, we, have to, we have to model the bipartite algebra now. We have to find a model for the, for the joint system. But we don't want to assume too much. We want to do it axiomatically. So I'll define that a bipartite algebra is a C-star algebra, AAB, which contains these two as commuting subalgebras. Right? So we need the commutativity, of course. And we additionally assume that their intersection is just the identity. So that means that Alice and Bob don't have access, to, like they don't both have access to the same measurement apparatus. Their labs are separated. And the third one is just saying that we threw away all unnecessary degrees of freedom already. We, are, yeah, we assume that the, if, if I take the union of, of Alice's and Bob's observables, that's just jointly generating the full algebra. Okay, so those I think are very natural assumptions and a, a tensor product setup will, for instance, always is, satisfy these assumptions, but there are more general examples, such as the, the face space circle thing that I just showed to you. Um, okay, so how do we model states in this setting? What is a, what is a bipartite state? So I should first say what is a state on a system that is described by its observable algebra. That is a linear functional from the algebra to the complex numbers, which is positive, and which sends the identity to one. So that's just taking expectation values, right? And now a bipartite state for this, for this system will be a state on the bipartite algebra. So that, I think, makes sense. And we can then, for instance, define the marginals by restricting the state to Alice's algebra, to Bob's algebra. That's just taking expectation values. And for the remainder of this talk, I will assume, unless I state it otherwise, that we have a fixed bipartite algebra, fixed local algebras, and the pure bipartite state. So we'll do purity because I want to talk about the Schmidt rank in the end. That's the, the thing that I want to quantify. And the Schmidt rank is something defined for pure states. We can make a Schmidt number thing or Schmidt measure, which are different generalizations to, to mixed states, but these always circle back to the pure state case. They use this pure state case. So we need to, we need to tackle that first. Um, yes, so let's now, with, with a fixed uh, Alice algebra and a fixed Bob algebra and a fixed bipartite algebra, let's look at some things that we can define. I'll define a compression. We had in the beginning this, this um, when I showed you the Schmidt decomposition, we were compressing onto the local systems of Alice and Bob. So can we make sense of this in the commuting operator framework? Yes, we can. We'll say that a compression is a, some joint Hilbert space for Alice and Bob. We have a unital CP maps, CA and CB. So I'm working in the Heisenberg picture here. And the bipartite state in the commuting operator framework. And I, that this is a very important assumption. I assume that these maps have commuting range. And, well, that's compressing the, the observables with respect to omega. I assume that this um, commuting operator framework system here recovers all the correlations of omega. Okay, so this is, this is like a model. I'm, I'm modeling the, the correlation in, correlations in omega in the commuting operator framework here. And I can restrict, of course, the tensor product framework. So for the tensor product framework, I'm asking the same thing, but I'm assuming that the Hilbert space is a tensor product Hilbert space and that the, that the local channels are um, separated in the tensor product way. Okay, 
So if I, if I find something, if I find a compression here, it's a compression of observables, then I have a model for, for this bipartite state in the tense product framework. Maybe something I, I forgot to say, uh, this picture here um, shows, us was, shows us what this does in the Schrodinger picture. So a, a compression of observables, a local compression, corresponds in the Schrodinger picture to a state simulation. I'm using the, the state psi to simulate omega with these maps CA and CB. Okay, so what can we use these compressions for? Um, well, we can use them to define the Schmidt rank. And in the beginning I had this definition, no, I had this uh, operational interpretation of the Schmidt rank. Well, we'll just generalize that. I'm defining here the Schmidt rank as the square root of a compression dimension, so of the, of the dimension of, a, of the Hilbert space of a compression, and I'm taking the infimum of all compressions. But now these are compressions in the commuting operator framework, so we should ask, is it equivalent to, to look at the commuting, sorry, at the tense product framework? And for that we have this, this theorem, so if the Schmidt rank is finite, and that's referring to this definition here, then there actually exists a unique tensor product compression, which is, we, we call it the minimal compression, which has the property that the local Hilbert spaces of Alice and Bob are Schmidt rank dimensional. And with this theorem, we get that there's actually an, actually an equivalence between the uh, Schmidt rank defined in this, in this way uh, using the tensor product or the commuting operator framework formalism. Now, some of you might, might think this is weird because there's a finite gap between the commuting operator framework and the, the tensor product framework and Sirison's problem. So what's happening here? Well, the reason is the difference is only occurring in the case where the Schmidt rank is infinite anyhow. So in the case where it's finite, both are, both are equivalent. Okay, so um, there's something else that we can do using these these tensor product compressions, or models, if you want, we can make a definition when we call the state, let's say, tame. And the, w what we define is uh, a state is, is well-behaved well or tame if it admits a tensor product compression. So if it can be modeled in the, in the tensor product framework. And we would like to understand this set of states. Like, I'm not just interested in the Schmidt rank, I want to understand entanglement in general in the commuting operator framework. So maybe this, this set of, of pure states is interesting. And we can actually give a very, I think, very nice algebraic definition or equivalent definition uh, of tame states. To state it, I need a mathematical tool uh, called the GNS representation. I'll briefly go over it. Um, given, the, given the C-star algebra, so our observable algebra, there exists a unique, for every state, there exists a unique smallest representation of this algebra on some Hilbert space where there exists a, a vector which implements this state. So this is like a, like a purification. And just as in the case of the purification, there is a unique smallest one. Okay. And this, this thing that's important for us, this GNS representation can be constructed canonically. It's computable in, in many examples. So it's a, it's a nice structure for us. And yeah, the theorem about tame states states that a bipartite pure state is tame if and only if this GNS representation is a product representation. In that case, I can really represent my, my um, state omega as a, as a state on a product Hilbert space, right? I mean, I, wait, here it is. I have now this, this thing that I can write my omega with, with a vector on a, on a product Hilbert space. And with this notion of, of tame states, we can give an algebraic definition of the Schmidt rank. The algebraic definition just looks at tame states first. For tame states, we define the Schmidt rank as the, the Schmidt rank, the vector Schmidt rank of this GNS vector. Right? For, for, a, for a tame state, I have this GNS vector and it lives inside the tense product Hilbert space, by the way, in a unique way. And I can, I can define this. This looks, this looks sensible from an algebraic point of view, but it's not really, really operational. But for the operational thing, I had the first definition. Um, yeah. So what do we do if the state is not tame? Well, then we just set it to infinite. It's justified by the other definitions <laughs> in an operational way. Um, so let's, for the third definition, let's uh, look at a communication scenario. Uh, in, this, in this communication scenario, Alice picks 
picks some observables, so she wants to send a message, she encodes that into the choice of an observable on her side, and then she, she prepares the conditional, set, conditional state by measuring that observable AA on one share of a bipartite system. Then she takes the other share of that bipartite system and sends it to Bob. So she picks A and sends the conditional state to Bob. Bob then picks some, some measurement and measures. And what he gets is precisely the, the correlations. So omega of AB, right? And now we want to ask the question, can we encode this transmission faithfully into a finite dimensional quantum system? So MK is here the, the algebra, the observable algebra of a finite dimensional quantum system, so just matrices. Can we, can we encode this, this transmission here? Can we encode it faithfully? And this, well, this we use to define the Schmidt rank. Uh, we define the Schmidt rank here as the infimum of the dimension K, such that faithful encodings and decoding maps exist that do encode this transmission in such a way that, that it's faithful, so that this diagram commutes. Here, by the way, I'm using the convention that the, uh, the infimum of the empty set is infinity. So if it's not possible to encode into a finite dimensional system, well, then the Schmidt rank should be infinite, right? Um, yes. So let's get to, to the main theorem. I mean, I, I, I think you, you all guessed that this will be coming. These three definitions are equivalent. And actually, in the paper, we have many more equivalent definitions. And I think this is really neat because we have, we have on the one hand side, we have an algebraic definition, which is computable. And on the other hand, we have operational uh, definitions for this. So let's look at some properties that this correlation invariant satisfies. First of all, most importantly, this is actually a generalization of the Schmidt rank. So in the case of matrix algebras, it coincides with the usual, usual Schmidt rank definition. Um, second one, it's monotone under local operations. Anything that would not satisfy this uh, shouldn't be called, well, a Schmidt rank or shouldn't be an entanglement monotone. Um, something else that I want to say is that um, it's more in the direction of this theorism problem. Uh, if we have a state, a bipartite pure state with finite Schmidt rank, then we know that its correlations can be modeled with tensor products. It's kind of obvious from the compression definition, but I think it's still worth mentioning this again. So this tells us something about Sirison's problem. Also, we had this, this notion of tame states. Tame states contain the set of states with finite Schmidt rank, but are a bit more general. Um, and yeah, those, they, those are the ones that are similable with tense products of infinite dimensional Hubble spaces. Okay, something else that I find quite interesting is that we, by the way, ignore this term. This is some, some term from, from Sister theory. Um, we can ask which Sister algebras or which observable algebras do admit only tame states. So I'm looking at the Sirison problem. I'm saying, okay, a tame correlation is a correlation which is not too wild in a sense, so there's not too much entanglement. And it actually turns out in an if and only if way that this tells us something about the observable algebra. So we can mathematically classify maybe the, the quantum systems by the way, or the, the, the mathematical observable algebras that are associated to these systems, we can classify by asking how do they entangle to other systems. I think that's, that, that could be an interesting uh, direction for future research. Um, so w what can I say about an observable algebra if I know how the system associated to it entangles to other quantum systems? So let's get back to the question. Um, how can we answer this rigorously? When can a bipartite system be considered finite dimensional? Well, if there's not too much entanglement, so if the Schmidt rank is, is finite um, in a rigorous way. So um, some some further content that I want to mention to you that, that's in the paper is that we can compute the Schmidt rank in certain models, like the AKLT model or the Heisenberg model, or more general, uh, just spin systems. In the translation invariant case, so ground states of, of translation invariant Hamiltonians, we can make a relation between the Schmidt rank and uh, matrix product state things, so finitely correlated states. And yeah, I said this already, we have many more equivalent definitions. And um, yeah, as an outlook, I would be interested to go to the to mixed states, or we would be interested. Um, I would very much like to define more general entanglement monotones, which actually say something interesting in the case where the Schmidt rank is, is infinite. 
at the moment we have this tame property, uh, which well says something, but we we would like to, to quantify the infinity of entanglement in that case. And yeah, it would be nice to do uh, device independent cryptography in this case. So I, um, in the in DI you say I have a black box here. I don't know what the attacker will use, what, what quantum system he uses. And then you, people usually make the assumption it's a finite dimensional Hilbert space. So can we actually make our our uh, protocol secure to attackers using using C style algebras? I think that's a nice question. And uh, with that, I want to end. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. The room is open for questions. Please approach the mic. <coughs> Thanks for the talk. Uh, does does the compression always exist for any state? Uh, in the tensor product framework, yes. In the commuting operator framework, if and only if, sorry, other way around. In the commuting operator framework, yes, always. Uh, in the tensor product framework, if and only if the state is tame. Okay. And we know that. Um, is it obvious that in the community framework they always exist? Yeah, you can take the GNS representation and restrict it to the local algebras. That gives you one. And uh, if you have hard duality, there's a unique minimal one. So there's actually a unique compression, which is good in a way. Hi. Thanks for Hi. the interesting talk. Um, I was um, so so in infinite dimensions, right? If you if you if you have a tensor product of infinite Hilbert spaces, you can have states that are infinite inch mid rank, but they're always going to be epsilon close to to a state of finite inch mid rank. Uh, is this is this something you've thought about in the commuting operator framework? Say like are, are are there strange like wild states that are in some sense close to to tame states, and do they have properties? Say like um, do they have some nicer properties? Yeah. Than fully wild states. Yeah, I don't I don't have a slide to jump to, but. Um, you have in, in CSTA theory, you have different notions of CSTA tensor product. You have the maximal CSTA tensor product and the minimal one in particular, um, and many others. Uh, on the maximal one, you can represent all bipartite states. So with my definition of bipartite algebra, there um, well, it's, it's always a quotient of the maximal CSTA tensor product, and a bipartite pure state, you can always do a pullback to that thing. Then for that, you can, you can ask this question. Um, if you take the closure of the states, the pure states with fine edge mid rank, you'll always stay inside of those states which you can still factorize through the minimal CSTA tensor product. Yeah. So this, um, in Cirozon's problem, you, you have this correlation bodies and you take the closure of CQ, which is the finite dimensional quantum strategies. That corresponds to the minimal CSTA tensor product. Yeah. Commuting operator strategies uh, correspond to the maximal CSTA tensor product. Uh, fine edge mid rank states correspond to, well, CQ strategies, and yeah, you can make a bijection between these. Okay, thank you. So you've you've defined um, entanglement here via the, um, I mean, by the by correlations. Yeah. We know in finite dimensions that there are mixed states that don't violate any Valen inequality, and there are also multipartite states that don't violate any multipartite bell, bell type inequality. So I was curious about how you saw the generalization going for either mixed states or for multipartite. Yeah. So for framework. yeah, for multipartite, it's uh, Schmidt rank is very hard even sure. in finite dimensions. So I I don't know so much about that. Um, wait, sorry. Um. <laughs> so for mixed. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Uh, for mixed states, um, I would define entanglement as. So in a mixed state I would call, or just general state on CISA, on bipartite CISA algebra, I would call entangled if it's outside of the closure of the, pro of the convex hull of product states. And closure is in the weak star topology. Um, does, it, does that answer your question? No, right? Do you, do you expect that to then, you, you would be able to extend some Schmidt number definition that then means that? Yeah. So um, if. If the sister algebras are su sufficiently well behaved in the sense that they're separable, then you can use use measure theory, um, if and then it works. Um, if not, you run into problems because measure theory on a on a compact host of space which is not separable uh, has has problems. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the nice talk. Um, my question is, you kind of just said, oh, and whenever Schmidt rank is not 
finite, then we, we set it to be infinite. Well, it makes sense to think that there might be kind of different kinds of infinities for for the possible, like there's j not just like one infinity. I yeah, so w what you can do, but that's kind of boring, I guess, is just take, uh, in instead of saying it's infinite, you can take the cardinality of the Hilbert space that you need to, to represent them. But in all interesting cases, that's still separable infinity. Um, beyond that, I don't know. So the... This is also so what operational, I operational, I think, meaning behind it. Like you would need some task where yeah. that distinguishes different Schmidt ranks, and then maybe you can ask. What I mean, happens in the in, in the case of finite Schmidt rank, yes, we can we can define such such tasks. Um, the the compression one that I that I mentioned is basically the task of preparing the state with a, a K Schmidt rank state uh, in a in a local way, but. In the case where it's infinite, I, I don't know. So yeah, we're, we're in search of good entanglement monotones for, for states where the Schmidt rank is infinite. And the one comment like for this uh, DI crypto, I think in the last QIP we had this operator algebraic uh, self-testing. Yes. Uh, uh, I think maybe that has some inspiration yeah. to yeah. us. Thanks. If there are no more questions, let's thank the speaker again.